Good evening and welcome everyone. Um, before we get started here tonight, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping rules that we have. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, if you could uh, make sure your mics are muted, uh, we're going to try to keep them muted on our end. And there will be time at the end of the presentation for questions to be asked. The other thing I'd like to remind everybody tonight is this is our ninth grade orientation night. And if uh, you have questions concerning back to school information and the plan that we have, uh, you can feel free to ask them at another time. Uh, you may call into the school and we're going to provide you with a web link that you could send emails to for those questions. So please keep in mind this is to welcome our ninth graders to Columbia Montour Area Vocational Technical School. Good evening, CMA, CMABTS ninth grade students, parents, and guardians. I am Ken Kreider, the Administrative Director of Columbia Montour Area Vocational Technical School. First, congratulations on your acceptance to Columbia Montour Area Vocational Technical School we look forward to having you join the amazing CMABTS community this year as the class of 2024. High school is truly an exciting time in a student's life. As educators, we attempt to strike the perfect balance in providing students with an academic foundation of essential knowledge and skills offering 17 career technical vocational training programs to choose from and affording many other educational and social experiences through athletics, clubs, and student organizations. We are so proud of you for making this decision to make career and technology education a part of your high school goals. And we commend you for this decision. At CMABTS, we offer a great opportunity for our students to be successful in a career path of their choice after high school as we can meet both the academic demands, the competency-based instructions needed for skill development. Our desire is to ignite the passion in our students so they may deliver a curiosity for learning. We are committed to raising expectations, increasing achievement, and preparing students for tomorrow. Our goal is for CMABTS students to be career ready. We recognize that there are several pathways for our students to choose on their way to a career. Columbia Montour Rams will graduate career ready students prepared to make decisions to go to college, enlist in the military, enter the workforce, or use the earned credentials to enhance other endeavors. Columbia Montour ABTS believes in building strong relationships and partnerships with our families and community so that all of our students can be successful. Our teachers work hard and are dedicated to providing quality instruction and strong responses to practices to student learning. We are a community of learners. On behalf of the entire CMABTS faculty, staff, we are eagerly looking forward to meeting all of you in the coming year. Indeed, our work together will ensure that each of you will begin to fulfill our school's mission to prepare CMABTS students to meet the challenges of work and life in an ever-changing world. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce to you the administrative team at Columbia Montour. Mr. Jim, James Dunkelberger is the Director of Student Services and our Assistant Director. Our building principal is Mrs. Sue Shipman, our assistant principal, Mr. Andy Meyer. Our business manager, who is not able to be with us tonight, 
is Mr. Tony Lilo, our Director of Technology responsible for bringing this wonderful presentation and allowing all of us to be able to see it, Mr. Jeremy Adams. Our Director of Maintenance, who takes care of keeping our school uh, clean, up to date, and well maintenanced, Mr. Zach Appleman. Mr. Dunkelberger. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kreider. Um, as Mr. Kreider said, my name is Jim Dunkelberger. I am the Director of Student Services and the Assistant Director here at Columbia Montour ABTS. Um, we're going to start tonight's presentation with some, some Columbia Montour basics, okay? Basic things about the school day and things. So, students, the length of school day, your school day begins at 8, 10 a.m., okay? Um, your day ends at 3, 11 p.m., uh, you'll then be transported home. So the length of the day is 8, 10 until 3, 11 p.m. The school calendar. Um, this, is, this can be a little bit tricky, okay? Parents, especially if you have students that are still attending in home districts, you'll need to maintain different school calendars. Your student at Columbia Montour ABTS will follow this school calendar. This school calendar is available on our website. Um, this school calendar was presented to folks at registration, um, but this is the school calendar that you follow. Um, in regards to the school calendar, uh, you have to be cognizant of days when the home district is off, but Columbia Montour Votec has school. The home districts will provide transportation on those days. Okay, so again, if the Columbia Montour ABTS is in school, but the homeschool is off, the homeschool will provide transportation on those days. Now, there is one exception to that, and that goes back to weather, okay? So anything related to inclement weather, delays or closings, students will do what the homeschool is doing. So if your, homeschool stu if your student's home district is Berwick and Berwick is on a two hour delay, but Columbia Montour Votech is not, your student has a two hour delay. If you're a student from Millville and Millville is closed, but Columbia Montour Votech has a delay or remains open, you are off that day, okay? So anything related to weather, it goes back to what the homeschool is doing on the calendar. Other than that, this is the calendar that you follow, okay? Mr. Adams. So the next thing that we want to go over really quick is just a, a picture of the grounds here in the building map, okay? The, the top where it says the floor plan of Columbia Montour ABTS, on the right-hand side is the entrance to the building. On the left-hand side is the exit to the building, okay? So the traffic pattern follows one way around the building. Um, Essentially, our building is all on one floor. It's more or less just a big rectangle, the grounds uh, with a couple offshoots, but it's pretty simple to follow. We'll go more over, we'll go over traffic patterns here a little bit more um, in a few minutes. As a CMAVTS freshman, your student will be participating in exploratory vocational programming. Exploratory vocational programming means that they will be rotating through four different training programs and then making a decision as to what program they want to continue to receive their training in, okay? The exploratory program this year is gonna look a little bit different than it has in years past. We have reduced the amount of each exploratory experience for a student, okay? So instead of receiving nine weeks in four different programs, your student will receive four and a half weeks in four different programs, okay? They will then make the decision as to what program they hope to continue on in around Christmas, and they will start in their formal training program at the beginning of the second semester in January. Okay, so essentially they're going to receive about 18 additional weeks of vocational programming in the program of their choice. 
okay? So we've changed that a little bit this year. So the vocational exploration, all students are still gonna see four programs, but they're only going to see each program for four and a half weeks, as opposed to nine weeks. This allows them in the end to receive more instruction in the program of their choice. Okay, couple notes about student transportation. This is always a tricky issue. And being that we we're bringing in students from seven different districts, um, this is an area that we really need to spend some time on, okay? Um, first thing to remember, transportation arrangements are made by the homeschools. So pickups, drop-offs, places like that, those times, they are all established by the homeschool. Uh, Columbia Montour, AVTS does not establish those, um, those routines, okay? Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about students riding the bus. Um, the, the golden rule with the bus is that students may only ride the bus that they are assigned to. Cross district transportation is prohibited. So a student from Berwick who wants to go to their friend's house in Bloomsburg that same day cannot ride the Bloomsburg bus. Um, it's a liability issue that is prohibited. So there is no cross district busing, okay? Students must ride the bus they're assigned to and ride the bus of the district that they are registered with, okay? Please keep in mind, bus drivers have the authority to assign seats on the bus as they deem necessary. Um, transportation is gonna be tricky enough this school year, um, but, but we just wanna make everybody aware that on that school bus, the bus driver is the authority figure. Um, parent pickups and drop-offs. Okay, so this year in regards to a lot of the COVID stuff that is happening, we've had to change our routines a little bit. Parent pickups and drop-offs will occur in the junior parking lot only. So we will not be having parent pickups and drop-offs in front of the building or behind the building. All parent pickups and drop-offs will occur in the junior parking lot. We will show you on a map here shortly where the junior parking lot is, okay? So parent pickups and drop-offs in the junior parking lot. Continuing with transportation. Um, in light, again, of a lot of the COVID concerns, parents that are dropping students off, students may not be dropped off by parents prior to 7.45 a.m. Um, this, this is for, for supervisory reasons, um, but parents, students may not be dropped off by parents prior to 7.45 a.m. Student drivers, um, this comes into play a little bit with ninth grade, but not a lot, but we do wanna go over this. Any student driving to school should arrive no earlier than 8 a.m. and all students will park in the senior parking lot. And we will show that on the map here shortly as well. Any vehicle that is parked on campus by a student will require a parking permit. Uh, a student can contact the office in regards to how to obtain a parking permit, okay? Um, okay, again, on days that a school calendar differs from a homeschool calendar, the homeschool will provide transportation for CMAVTS students, okay? The only change in this is when it's inclement weather. When inclement weather causes a change in the school day, students follow the delays or cancellations of the homeschool. Columbia Montour AVTS will utilize a robocall system and local media outlets to announce weather related delays or cancellations. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at traffic patterns. This is bus patterns um, and this is for pickups and drop-offs. So in the morning, in the a.m., okay, uh, you can see at the top, Mr. Adams, can you go to CMABTS there at the top with the pointer? So right there, that is the, the sign out in the front of the building, CMABTS. To the right of the sign, that is the entrance, okay? So as you follow that route around, Mr. Adams, go ahead. You come around the bend and you hit the junior parking lot, okay? That is where all parent student drop-offs and pickups will occur, okay? Parents will then exit the junior lot around the building and out, out the exit, okay? Um, keep in mind, buses will be dropping off 
uh, at the parent exit time. So you will have to deal with that a little bit. Um, but this is, this is the traffic pattern. All parent and student drop-offs will be um, in that junior parking lot, okay? In the afternoon, things change a little bit, okay? So in the afternoon, the entrance remains the same, Mr. Adams, okay? So parents picking up students will come around to the junior lots, pick up in that area, exit the junior lot, around the building, and out the exit. This is a change. Generally, we have had um, school buses pick up on this side, on the main entrance side of the building. However, because of the requirements with social distancing and, and, and keeping things clear in hallways, um, this is a more feasible approach for us to be dealing with this situation this school year, okay? So parent drop-offs and pickups, Mr. Adams, in the junior lot. Um, and then you would travel around the rest of the building. Thank you, Mr. Shipman. Um, my name is Mrs. Shipman. I'm the principal here and I can't wait to have kids back in the building. I need kids. <laughs> um, so welcome everyone. And I apologize. I'm sure I won't get names and faces this year as well when I can't see faces, but we'll try. Um, I just wanted to go over attendance with you. I'm not going to read it to you verbatim. It's very similar to what you've done in your home districts, I'm sure. Biggest thing is, is when a student is absent, we need an excuse as soon as they return to school, okay? And if you have not used Skyward before, I don't know how it works in all the different management systems. Maybe you're familiar with Sapphire or the others. But in Skyward, if your child is absent, they remain, that absence remains unexcused until we get the note, okay? So it will still look like a you and unexcused in the system until we get a note. We need that note within three days of return. If we don't have it, then it's, it just stays unexcused, okay? And you, on that note of excuse, we need your date. Obviously, we please need the student name. Last name, first name is good because we can't just tell from the parent name. We need the date of the absence. What is the reason for being absent? And then we need a parent or guardian signature. Um, these are just some of the tardiness issues. Um, becomes more of an issue typically as the children get older but just please be aware when we are dealing with tardies we the day is important we need students here immediately um underclassmen freshmen will absolutely they their day begins in their training program so they don't they can't miss that it's it's important that you get here on time so when students have unexcused tardies and a tardy is unexcused if you don't bring us that note that says, I was at the dentist, I was at the doctor, that type of thing. Bring a note, it's all good. Don't bring a note, and then we add up the detention, okay? We do, um, in different increments, we do after school detention. We will arrange that with parents, so it's convenient and we can work it out with you. For older students who are also driving, they're the ones that tend to arrive a little late. Um, it affects their driving privilege. Um, please note down at the bottom, being late because you missed the bus, you overslept, or oh, my car broke, that is not a legit reason for being unexcused, okay? We will work with you, just come see us, but that is not, um, that's not a le legit reason to keep racking up the um, unexcused tardies. Um, we also, with our truancy, um, and kids being off campus without a legit reason to be off campus that calls you, that considers you truant. When a student is off campus for any reason when they are not supposed to be, they receive a zero for every class that they have missed, okay? And being that you're not to be off when you, obviously you were truant, then the teachers don't necessarily have to allow you to make up that work. I would also say 
That's a huge reason if you read down there the last sentence of the first bullet, all unexcused absence, the student will not be allowed to receive credit for work missed unless otherwise approved by the director or designee. So it is extremely important to get the excuses in because if the teacher doesn't know that your absent, absence was legit, who are they to know that you should have the opportunity to make up the work? So I cannot stress how much importance there is on getting us the notes. Um, unexcused absence, there's a whole list of reasons here. Um, illegal unemployment, truancy, parental neglect, oversleeping, missing the bus, shopping, relatives, babysitting, remaining home, oh, I've got a project to do, working on chores. Um, it's also listed here, visiting the college library for reference, uh, reference work. Now, I will say as an older student, you can do college visits, but bring us a note from the college that says, yes, so-and-so was at that college, okay? You will notice when a student misses 10 days or more, they must return to school for all the further absences with doctor's notes for any further absence, okay? I would tell you, even if it's day one and it's a doctor, you're at the doctor's on that first absence you ever have, bring me a doctor's note because then you're still hanging on to your 10 days to be absent because I have a headache, because I have a stomach ache. We really don't want you to miss 10 days in the course of a year because that's a lot of time out of your academics and a lot of time out of your training programs. But I would, just, I would really urge you anytime you're at a doctor, a dentist, an appointment, anything, get that note because that preserves your parental absence days. Um, this, you'll see below our grading system. Obviously, grading is reflecting how the child is doing in the schoolwork compared to their ability level and, and how they're achieving. We work on a 100 to 94, a 93 to 85, 84 to 75, 74 to 68. Our lowest passing grade, you'll notice, is a 68, okay? One thing I do want to mention when we're hitting grades and because I've hit attendance, when students are at that point when they're choosing in December to get into their training programs and making those choices, that's a competitive process just like it was to get accepted into VOTEC. It's grades, attendance, and discipline, again, that, that's how kids compete to get in these shops. So if my grades are great but I've got terrible attendance, and someone else has the same grades, same great grades, but better attendance, they're going to get possibly that last training program slot that I wanted. So I really want to put that out there. Keep those grades up there. Get the attendance where it needs to be. That helps you get the training program that you want on a permanent basis. Graduation requirements. Your students hopefully are here for all four years. Okay, in the course of that time, they'll earn nine credits of vocational time. Then they need the four credits of English, four credits of social studies. We do allow students to um, replace their senior year of history or social studies with a foreign language. We offer Spanish here. Um, then the student obviously four credits in science, four credits in math. Um, much of it their freshman and sophomore years is pretty much similar. For all students, unless their math is advanced or there's a different situation, but in our, our freshman and sophomore years, we're really working hard to get the kids ready for the Keystone exams. Um, and then your student will also have health and phys ed every, uh, health is two years, nine and 11, phys ed is every year. We have critical reading and math um, problem solving classes. And they, those two classes come in their sophomore year, but students need to pass every class that we cram into their schedule while they're here in order to graduate on time. We do have an enrichment period at the beginning of the day. It is from 815 to 844 this year. This is not sit around twiddle your thumbs. This is to get that unfinished homework done. 
to touch base with a teacher that you, you didn't understand something. And I think this time, this time will be even more important this year because some of the work we're doing is gonna be at home. Um, like it says, get additional help from staff on, on classroom work. We also have class meetings and club meetings during this time. And if you'll notice at the bottom, although I've mentioned, you know, it's a great time to work with teachers and get work caught up. You need to have a pass from that teacher. If I wanted to go see Mr. Dunkelberger to work on something for his class, if he was my teacher, I need to have a pass from him to give to my homeroom teacher before I go anywhere during that enrichment period. You will not be allowed out of your enrichment period without a pass. Because as we've mentioned before, one of the things we really need to handle very well is how much traffic we have in the hallways. And we're really trying to limit that. But enrichment period can get a lot done if you use it successfully. All right, good evening, folks. My name is Mr. Meyer. I'm the assistant principal here. Uh, just to continue on with some of the fun stuff. Uh, student handbook, which is basically kind of your owner's manual for a student. Uh, there's two places that you can get it. Uh, number one, if you look at the uh, website, right on the left-hand side, there's a student handbook. Uh, we still have to make some final tweaks on it, but this is the one from last year. So you'll see that that's available at all the time. Uh, so parents, students, if you have a question on that. Also students, uh, on your Chromebooks, it will be an icon on there. So anytime you have a question about where to find something or if there's an issue that you need to, you're not sure something, anytime you, on your Chromebook, you can look at that. Uh, as soon as we get into the year, we get things rolling, you will be required to sign a form uh, that you and your parents have read and understand the student handbook. Uh, that just basically proves to us that you read through it, you look through it, you understand all the policies and procedures that we do here. And again, if you have any questions on any of that, feel free to ask. We're here to help uh, in case you're unfamiliar with something. The next thing is the dress code, which we don't, it's not the fun stuff, but this is what we need. Um, simple things though, the big difference is, is at the Botech school here, we have certain requirements for the certain vocational areas. So steel-toed boots uh, might be required, safety glasses might be required. Those kind of things are, are key in the vocational programs. The other dress code issues are probably very common from what you're familiar with in your home school. Um, just make sure you're covered up, make sure things are appropriate. Um, Anything that promotes drugs, alcohol, tobacco, sexual activity, obviously is not permitted. A uh, couple other things, make sure your skirts or your shorts, especially now with the warm weather, are appropriate length. And change wallets, tops, all that good stuff. Uh, one thing definitely that has been an issue in the past, I'm told, that will be Definitely address this year. No Confederate flags will be permitted on your clothing at all. Ladies, please make sure your tops are appropriate length, both top and bottom. Discipline, my biggest thing, level <laughs> one. So very simple. These are just minor issues. And for parents, one of my big things that I like to do is I like to address Discipline issues at a level one. I want to get things solved when they're this level. That way we don't have to get the farther than that. But simple things, horseplay, bad language. That's a big one for me. Food and drink, tardy to class, hallway. Um, possession of non-instructional items. That's one that a lot of parents get confused what that actually means. If it's a distraction in that classroom, that's it. So if you have music playing, if you have something on, you know, that you're doing, that's distracting. And obviously because of COVID, the last one, uh, wear your appropriate face mask. Bluetooth speakers. What's up? Bluetooth speakers. Bluetooth speakers. Yep, Mr. Dunkelberger just said that. Bluetooth speakers, uh, that kind of falls into cell phones, but we'll get there. Level two. Uh, there's a lot of them here. 
But cutting class, hall pass, cafeteria issues, repeated level one. So if a teacher has to tell you to put your mask on twice, that's getting to level two, okay? Uh, matches, lighters, anything like that, and internet issues and obscene language, okay? That gets to a level two, that gets to my area. And again, the consequences for that. I'm gonna be calling you. You're gonna know about everything that goes on. Lunch detention, after school detention, and then in school suspension if it gets to that level. Level three, skipping school, academic dishonesty, sexual harassment, fighting, bullying, obscene language towards the faculty or staff. That's a big one in my world. Um, we need to work on that respect aspect to students. And if obscene language, that's just not gonna be tolerated, okay? Um, and tobacco products, okay? And big one right now is vaping. So if we catch any of that, that's an instant level three. Again, parent contact, out of school suspension, and depending, I was just saying, depending on what it is, you'll be talking with your local authorities of, about citations and all that kind of stuff. Parents, please do not let your kids get to a level three incident. You're talking permanent records, you're talking life-changing decisions at this point. If we get to a level three, there's, we, we've got some major issues as a school and, and we'll be on a first name basis. So please try to work with your students. Level four, at this point, this is Mr. Kreider's area. He's gonna play with this and Mrs. Shipman for sure. Um, theft, drug and alcohol, weapons, physical assault, Okay, and anything that's illegal. At that point, parents, you'll be talking with Mrs. Shipman for sure, and chances are you'll be talking with a police officer at that point. So again, I restate, let's deal with level ones before we try to get invested in all these other levels, but just for your reference. Next one, and probably my biggest frustration and parents, we, we go back to this idea of we're training students ready to be in the workplace. They are workforce ready when they leave here. When you go to work, you can't be on your cell phone all the time. Trust me, it's not that important. It can wait till the period is over or lunch, okay? So cell phones, you can't have them out, okay? If a teacher asks you for it, you have to give it to them. If they refuse to do that, that is insubordination and that's an automatic level two, okay? If you can't be using your camera, so students, sorry, but your Snapchat is gonna have to wait till the end of the day. Trust me, you will survive, okay? And then obviously on the right, if you look at that, the first offense, we'll talk about that. Parents, the big one you need to be aware of, the second offense, you must come in and pick up that child's cell phone. So if I take your student's cell phone for the second time, you must drive in and pick that up with me. Okay, and we're gonna have a little chat after that. Okay, it's a big issue, especially now students feel like they can't live without it, but you cannot be on that cell phone. My recommendation, leave it in your locker. Don't even have it in your pocket. That way you're not tempted. That way there's no issue. Okay. Um, this is Mr. Dunkelberger again. I am the Director of Student Services. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Student Services Department, essentially the Student Services Department is the same as the Guidance Department at a home school. So um, Student Services handle things um, students uh, academic concerns, parent meetings, um, students who um, need counseling for personal matters, things like that, college transcripts, um, that is all arranged through the student services office here at Columbia Montour ABTS. Uh, Columbia Montour, we have two guidance counselors here. We have Mr. George Lynn. He will handle one part of the alphabet and then we have Mrs. Nicole Wenner 
who, who handles the other half of the alphabet. So they are the guidance counselors. Um, as part of our student services team, we also have a cooperative education coordinator, Mr. Beaver. Um, as many of you may know, students uh, in career and tech centers have the opportunity to participate in the Capstone Cooperative Education Program during the latter part of their high school career. Uh, Mr. Beaver helps us facilitate getting students into jobs and establishing um, employability links within the community. Uh, we also have a blended counselor here, Mrs. Flynn, or excuse me, Ms. Flynn. Ms. Flynn's responsibilities are to, um, to counsel students, but also to work with parents as a liaison between parents and community agencies that could help students um, in the pri in the private sector. So Mrs. Ms. Flynn is, is our blended counselor. She's in our student services department as well. Mrs. Diltz is our transportation coordinator. Um, I know that I stated previously that transportation is provided by the homeschools. However, uh, Mrs. Diltz is very effective in helping us work through the schedules of pickups and drop offs here at the building, as well as address concerns that arise on buses and to help parents make sure that the transportation system runs as smoothly as it can be. Uh, we also have an administrative assistant in the student services office, Mrs. Gensimer. Mrs. Gensimer is some primary, her primary responsibilities involve student records, student transcripts, um, getting things back and forth to colleges and things like that. So Mrs. Gensimer is the administrative assistant in the student services office. Nursing services. Of course, nursing services are available here at the Vote Tech School. Uh, we have recently added a school nurse, Mrs. Rischel. Uh, she replaced our previous nurse. Um, there's not really a whole lot to go over here other than um, that she is available on a daily basis. Um, a couple notes in regards to medication. Students who take medication at school must have the appropriate paperwork completed by their physician prior to being able to take the medication at school, okay? So medication forms are available on the CMA VTS homepage. Uh, you can also pick them up in the office. Uh, we can also mail them to you um, if, if you need that service as well. But medication, the medication and the need for medication must be appropriately documented. Doctor's orders are also required for all medication, well, they are required for all medication administration and student self-carry of inhalers and EpiPens. Students without a doctor's order may not have any type of medication on their person. Um, students, that is a violation of our drug and alcohol policy. If a student does have some sort of medication and we do not have a doctor's order for it, so we have to be very careful about that. Um, parents, if you have to get medication to the school, you must or you must bring the medication in or have another responsible adult bring the medication to the school. Students may not carry medication on the bus. They may not bring medication into the building. Parents need to take care of that. Special education programs and services. Um, the vast majority of the individuals that are involved with this piece, I've already been in contact with, we've already met, um, but Columbia Montour ABTS is committed to providing quality special education programs and services to students with identified needs. Any questions in regards to special education services or section 504 agreements should be referred to Mr. Dunkelberger at the email address or at the phone number provided. Okay, so one of the areas that's in addition to the, the, uh, the vocational offerings that we have at the Vote Tech School here, uh, we differ a little bit in regards to clubs and student organizations, okay? So career and technical centers have what we call career technical student organizations, okay? A career and technical student organization is a group of, of, of individuals with like interests in their trade that participate in different community service activities, um, different competitions, um, 
and, and other different meetings throughout the throughout the state of Pennsylvania and actually throughout the United States. Um, the career and technical student organizations that we currently have here at Columbia Montour are FCCLA, Skills USA, and FFA. Okay. In addition to those organizations, we also have a few clubs. We don't have the same offerings as a traditional homeschool, but we do obviously participate in the National Honor Society. We have a yearbook club. We have a ram the Rampage, which is our school newspaper. We have an art club and we have a SAD chapter as well. Students interested in participating in any of these activities should see the advisor or coach for more information. Hello, it's Mr. Shipman again. We, as I mentioned before, we use Skyward here as our grading attendance. That's our connection piece um, with you, the student, the family. It's, it's a great system. Once you get into it and learn the, um, all the nuances of it, you through this system, as it says here, will have real time access to grades, to lunch account, to, oh, did Johnny or Susie come to school today? Um, all that type of stuff. Okay, you can log on anytime that you can, all, you can put an app, there's an app on your phone that you can get for it and or you can sign up, you know, just using the website and set up parent access. You're, you will receive your parent, your parent access codes, login information in your packet of materials that's going to be sent out here, hopefully tomorrow. Um, I would also say schedules are in that information. Students can have a separate Skyward login and that information is presented there as well. That is going to be on their schedules. Okay, so you can set up accounts, one that you're using and the parents, I would tell you, there's a ton of connections you can make there as far as you can set it up to give you alerts when a student has work due or maybe you're, it's going to send you grades every so many, you know, you want your grades sent, sent to you every week or every two weeks, that type of thing. There's a lot you can do. There's a lot of um, different choices you can make as to how much you want it to do for you. Um, like I said, the parent information is in the mailing coming home. The student information is also there. It prints out on the student schedule, which is within that packet as well. If you have any issues getting in that Skyward account, just give us a call at the main office and we can help you. I would tell you any of you that any of you who have students here already, and or just for next year's purposes, Skyward rolls over every year and you do have to reestablish your parent account. Another little note I would tell you on that is if you have more than one student here at Columbia Montour, you can set it up so you have a login that you grab both of your children through one login. Um, that makes it really a lot more convenient. But if you ever have any questions on Skyward, don't hesitate to give me a call, give the main office a call and we can help you with all of it. Um, there are some monetary things that we just want to let you know about and hopefully so they don't end up in surprises that, hey mom, I need this. And you're like, what? Um, we do have every year there's class dues and or fundraisers for each grade level. We do fundraisers. We really encourage the parents to participate in those fundraisers to help cover class trips, prom, graduation, all sorts of activities like that. If a student does not participate in the fundraisers, they will be then billed for class dues. Typically class dues are $15. Sometimes they are $20 at the upper levels because there is a lot more that they're gonna end up paying for. And we try to pay for it with this with the fundraising, so you're not laying out your senior year $100, $200 just to get your kid, your student through graduation type thing. Lunch accounts, you can always put money on your lunch account through Skyward. Um, that's easily, you know, you can set that up through there. If you have any issues, give us a call. Anytime your student has a bill, sometimes they may incur a bill in their training program. Let's say they buy t-shirts or they have to buy something for that training program and they end up with a bill. Those bills, if, if they don't pay them directly right to the teacher at that time and they have an outstanding bill, like they have an overdue lunch bill, 
you can either pay it online or you can touch base with Mrs. Amy Heller in the business office and she will help your student or you figure out exactly what they owe for things. Maybe it's a bill, maybe it's a summer school class, a book, anything like that. Another thing I would mention while I'm talking about monetary issues here and the business office, our lockers do not have locks on them, but we sell locks here and I highly, highly, highly encourage you to buy a lock, but you need to have our lock that you buy in this office on your school locker here. It's $5, you keep it for the next four years, it's yours. Unfortunately, not everybody's as honest as we would like to be and things end up growing legs and walking out of lockers sometimes. So to me, it's a $5 investment. As Mr. Meyer said, you know, we prefer you didn't have your phone on you, but you got to keep it safe. Okay. You've got that hundred dollar pair of sneakers in your locker, put a lock on it, please. It's $5. You get to keep it. Like I said, if you cannot have any outside locks on your lockers, um, we will cut them off if we need to. Okay, folks. So, so as we stated at the beginning of the meeting, the purpose of this, this meeting was not to dis the, not to review questions in regards to our school reopening plan or COVID-19 procedures. Uh, we do want to give you the opportunity to, to forward those, any of those questions that you may have to the following email address, reopening at cmv.us or call the school directly. Um, with that being said, we will now open it to questions about the ninth grade orientation presentation from today. How do we respond to these, Jeremy? Do I just respond to the chat or? Right now, all of them have been taken care of except for uh, when will the students get? Do you want us to raise our hands or just, just ask? This is Crystal Parr. Go ahead, Crystal. Okay. Um, I just had a question. I may have missed it. Are students allowed to carry backpacks rather than having to go back and touch their lockers and in and out? Can they just carry their bag with their personal belongings or not? No. And one of the okay. things, one of the things that we're really trying to encourage this year because of COVID is that students do not bring anything to school unless it's absolutely necessary for them to have while they're here. If you think about it, if students are carrying backpacks to the school, we have no idea where those backpacks have been. They set them down on the floor, they set them down by the desk, and now we have a whole nother area that we need to try to sanitize before the next group would come in. So we are, uh, we've never allowed the students to have backpacks. They've always had to take them to the locker and then take their things out and use them during the day. So we are going to hold true to that this year. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's a question uh, out here that says why the four and a half week schedule uh, for our ninth graders? Uh, because of some schedule changes that we have had to do and taking a look at getting our students involved in their career program a little quicker, provide more hands-on classroom training, more certifications to better prepare them for when they leave here with the workforce. Our students will be able to start full-time in second semester in January in that career program of their choice. Um, they will still have uh, uh, a, a good deal of time with their instructor. And remember what the exploratory program is about. The exploratory program is to be able to provide that knowledge and interest in the career areas that they will be rotating through so they can get a flavor or an idea of what that career is going to be about as they pursue their time here with us at Columbia Montour. Makes sense. A combination key lock. I took care of that. Oh, did you? Okay. Oh, I see. Very good. 
When will students get their schedules? Planning on putting them in the mail tomorrow. Planning on putting them in the mail tomorrow, and uh, they will also be available if they don't have them when the student gets here first thing on Wednesday morning or Thursday morning, depending on whether you're an A student or a B student. That is a, a, another thing I'll cover uh, real quick. Uh, because we are running uh, a reduced schedule this year, we're running an A schedule and a B schedule. We've taken the student body and we've divided them in half. So we will only have 50% of our students in the building at one time to be able to provide those social distancing needs. So you may be an A student, which would be a last name A through K, or you may be a B student, which would be L through Z. If you are an A student, you will start your first day of school on Wednesday, August 20th. If you are a B student, you will start your first day of school on Thursday, August 21st. A students will be home and they will be doing online learning. 19th and 20th. 19th and 20th, I'm Wednesday, sorry. Wednesday. Got my date screwed up. So you'd be Wednesday the 19th, Thursday the 20th. Mr. Adams. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, please, who's speaking? Uh, I'm Katanga Walsh's mom, Angeline. Thank you. Um, what about the Chromebook? Like, my daughter starts on the B. So she'll be there Thursday. Like, how is she going to do classes on Wednesday if she don't have her Chromebook? She's not going to have to worry about Wednesday because, uh, like you said, obviously, she doesn't have that Chromebook. She doesn't know exactly how things are going to happen yet. So she gets a gimme day kind of on Wednesday, and our teachers will go through the same things on Thursday that they did on Wednesday, and we'll catch everybody up to speed that way. Um, there was also a question that we saw a couple times about are girls allowed to carry like a little crossbody purse, that type thing. Yes, that is allowed, um, but they are not allowed to carry the big purse that could be a book bag type thing. But yes, they are allowed to carry a small bag for their personal items. Okay, I have another question about the four and a half weeks. Is that the length of time for each program? It is the length of exploratory time that the students have before they choose the program that they would like to enter and stay in. They, once that choice is made, they will be in the program for 18 weeks of their ninth grade year. Yes, breakfast and lunches will continue to be offered. Um, and I do believe accounts can be set up by contacting the business office or online. And cash is allowed. And cashier. We are going to be serving uh, hot lunches. I'm not sure about breakfast. Yeah, we'll have breakfast. Yeah. It, will, it will be a hot breakfast as well. There will be transportation provided from your home school to your career center on the days that your home school does not meet. If they are a returning student, they will get their uh, Chromebook that they had last year. If they're a new student, they will get a new Chromebook assigned to them. New to us, yes. New to us, yep. Yes, they yes. Can carry lunches. students can carry lunches from home and we encourage that as well. Uh, 
the nurse one, I would recommend that. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to check on the with the nurse in regards to the 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 glucose questions. Um, I'm uh, unfortunately I'm not sure about that. If they're prescription, they will need to follow the guidelines of all prescription medication. Can we repeat what we just said about bus schedules? What did we say about bus schedule? Say, oh, um, the conflict. Okay. Days. Okay. So, so yes, on days the homeschools are all aware that this that the homeschool calendar is different from the Votech school calendar. The homeschool will provide transportation for those days. Do you want me to do the free lunch one? Students are allowed to have a water bottle on them. It must be a clear container. One of the things that we have done here uh, at the Career Center is we have installed all new drinking fountains for our students that allow bottles to be filled. The fountain part will be turn off, turned off. However, they will be allowed to fill those clear water bottles. Um, there's a question on here in regards to free lunch. I would suggest you contact our business office in regards to the transfer from a free lunch from a home district to, to, to our building. Um, different districts have different requirements in regards to, to, to lunch accounts and things. Some districts have grants that cover all the lunches and things. So I would suggest you contact our business office directly with questions about uh, free or reduced school lunch. Does anybody else have any other questions? Not seeing any at this time, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. And we are looking forward to seeing your sons and daughters attend school uh, on Wednesday morning, August 19th for Somebody's A students. About Southern uh, I'll take Southern. care of it. You got it. And Thursday morning, August 20th for B students. Again, thank you very much.